of Statesboro called Hope You Like It. Literally, that's the town. It's called Hope You Like It. So when I get to the corner where I'm about to change the, the route, I'm about to change to get on to uh, uh, 441, <laughs> and um, I see nothing but rolling hills. Nothing but rolling hills. And the wagon was fully assembled, and at the time that I started, because of the load of stuff that I put in there, thinking, oh, I got my porta potty, my tent, like everything, gallons of water, the whole bottom is, is you know, a um, storage compartment. So I stuffed everything I thought I was gonna need in the event that I didn't have any help, because I didn't know if I would have any help, you know? Would somebody put me up for the night? Like, what was gonna happen? So everything imaginable, I stuffed in there. So I get to hope you like it, and there's just rolling hills, and I'm like, there's no way. I, like, there's no way. Like, this was different when we were in the car. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, piece of cake, I can do this. But now that I'm actually doing it, and my body's already killing me, I can't do this. But then, I had to, I had to, I had to remind myself of the agreements. I made a few agreements with myself before I started this thing. And one of those agreements was that I was not gonna quit uh, unless either the wagon or myself could no longer like move forward like it was the wagon was so broken that it couldn't be repaired it was beyond repair or I was so broken that I was beyond the ability to continue so I hadn't reached that point so it wasn't an option <laughs> it wasn't an option to give up so here I am standing I hope you like it and I have to figure out how I'm going to do this so my option was the only option was to remove everything from the wagon except for what I absolutely needed, which were the mile marker flags, because I put a flag for every mile, and the uh, and my mallet, my battery, things like that. The overnight bag for clothing and personal hygiene items, things like that. Medications, pills, that kind of stuff. That's it. And I say, you know what? By faith, I have to believe that if I'm meant to be out here, the universe is gonna supply what I need. By whichever deity that I believe did it for me, I had to believe that it was going to work. So I did that. I stripped the wagon <laughs> of everything that added extra weight. And I tried again. And I said to the people, my team, and the people who were helping me, I said to them, I said, if it doesn't work, I'll surrender. But if it works, I will remain on this journey. And so it worked. <laughs> But it was like the joke, because here I am and hope you like it. And it's like I'm looking at a, a, a series of a dozen rolling hills. And afterwards, in hindsight, like after the event was all over and I'm, I'm toting this wagon back, I'm looking back and I'm like, those hills were nothing. Like they were literally nothing. Because <laughs> when I got to Macon, Georgia, their hills were four miles long. <laughs> And these little humps were nothing in comparison. But by the time I made it to Macon, Georgia, which was another almost 100 miles later, um, I had already endured the Mother's Day tornadoes. I had already endured being sideswiped by a semi-truck, falling into a um, sunken road. <laughs> I mean, I had already endured people adding, adding wood to the wagon, which was more weight, people adding new items, uh, here you need this and here you need that. So here, after everything was removed, people had given it all back to me. <laughs> and the other rule that I had was that I would refuse nothing that was good for me. And, um, and I didn't. If they offered it, I accepted. Um, and it was grateful. And some things I was wondering, should I be grateful for that? <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't matter you just surrender you know if this is your journey and you believe in it you've got to surrender to it uh, because it, resistance is futile <laughs> you're either gonna do it or it's gonna do you in one or the other 